Romagna. Classic. It's like a religion in, in, in Emilia Romagna Brodo because, you know, Tortellini in Brodo, Cappellacci in Brodo, you know, pff, Annolini in Brodo. So many dishes that are floating in this amazing broth that is classic to Emilia Romagna, but is basically just a broth. So this is the broth method, but I am going to make my version of the Emilia Romagna Brodo. So you can see both, because this is interchangeable. The meats, the vegetables, interchangeable, okay? It's the method, the technique. I keep telling you guys this. The method is more important than any recipe. Once you have this method down, you won't need to think about recipes for broth ever again or for stock. Now, what's the difference between broth and stock? Broth is made with meat and bones, or just meat, okay? Stock is made with only bones. Okay. Doesn't have the same intensity, doesn't have the same gelatin in most instances because when we make brodo, okay, we use highly gelatinous cuts of meat. And in this case, brodo is usually made with capon, but I'm using turkey because the capons here in the United States basically suck. Okay. The turkey gives up a lot more flavor into the broth, and I'm using beef shanks. So it's beef and capon usually in Emilia Romagna. But I'm going to use turkey and beef, okay? And Pinot's where I got the meat. They happen to have some knuckle bones, okay, which is just going to help, but you don't need. Just the turkey and the, and the beef is fine to make a classic brodo or, like I said, a really good cape on it if you can get it. On the side over here, we have basically carrots, onions, and celery, whole heads of garlic, bay leaves, fresh bay leaves, some black peppercorns, and I'm gonna get crazy. This is like a warlock's brew here. That's how you should think about it. You should think about it like you're this old strega, you're an old Italian witch, and you're presiding over this giant pot of brodo. And what you put in it is gonna nourish your family, it's gonna make people feel better, you're gonna give this brodo away, or I'm gonna get pissed, okay? I want you to make a lot, and that's the other thing. How much should you make? As much as you can fit in your freezer. That's how you decide. You say, how many containers can I fit in the freezer and engineer it backwards? Say, I can fit 10 quart containers. So you want to end up with, let's say, 10 quarts for the freezer and maybe another three or four quarts to keep in the fridge because you can use that quickly and maybe another four quarts to give away to people and that's how you decide what size pot you need. Now, I just make a buttload because I give it to everybody, and, you know, everybody wants my brodo. So I use this huge pot, which I don't even remember how many, how many quarts it is, but it's very, very big. 60. This is 60 quart. And well, you don't have to use a stainless for this. You don't have to, okay? It won't necessarily... You could use an aluminum pot, but I don't like them. I always use stainless. Aluminum's too corrosive. And you know, there is a little bit of acid going on here, so it may affect the flavor. So I like to use stainless steel. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load up the meat, okay? Fill it up with water and bring it up to a boil. But we also have to discuss how much to use, okay? Once again, completely up to you. You wanna make a super rich broth, you use more turkey and more beef. You wanna make it a little bit lighter, you use less, okay? What I usually do is I do one third meat, to two-thirds water, okay? And that's usually an excellent, excellent amount of meat. It comes out very rich. It's a beautiful broth. Drink it. I mean, it's unbelievable. You're going to see the, the quality of this broth just blows minds. Everyone that's going to have it is going to lose their shit, okay? For sure. If you will never, and I forbid you to, buy any store-bought crap broth. What do you think's in there? You don't know what's in there. That's the whole point. They use the worst of the worst of meats to make those broths on the shelves, okay? This is your carefully selecting. I got grass-fed beef shanks here. I got an organic turkey, all grass-fed meat, organic natural turkey, or organic vegetables, high quality. So now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start throwing the meat in. So like I said, I have about one-third to two-thirds going on here. So first thing we do, cold pot, cold water cold meat. You can even use frozen meat, no problem. As a matter of fact, this is the place where you would throw all of your frozen meat bone scraps that you've been saving in your kitchen when you do chicken or whatever it is. 
Utilization is the ultimate reason to make Brodo. Again, I'm making a classic specific Brodo from Emilia Romagna, the classic Brodo, but a broth should be a utilization item within your kitchen, okay? Where you are saving little pieces of chicken bones and little pieces of lamb bones throughout the course of cooking over a whole month, you can keep freezing those and by the end of the month, you'll have quite a bit of bones to add into this, to fortify it even more and to have a zero waste kitchen. This is the idea of a broth. A broth is exactly that. So you can get rid of all your bones, all your scraps of nerve, fat, chicken skin, all this kind of stuff can go right in here. It's amazing. It's what it's meant for. So I have fresh, like I said, grass fed beef shanks. I'm gonna put those in first, put them in like that. Put all the meat in first. There's really no reason to do anything to this turkey. Just throw the whole thing in, it's gonna cook forever. All the bones, I'm using the turkey necks. All the turkey scraps, I'm gonna save that turkey liver, use it for something else. But see all the bones, bang, boom, zing. And I actually don't have enough meat here. And I'm making ragu, so I got an extra Shank here, I'm gonna add that in. So here we go. Fill it up with water, cold water. And remember, if you overfill this while it's cold, when it gets hot, the molecules expand and the water will go over the side of the pot while you're heating it up. But you do wanna go as high as you can because when you throw the vegetables in, the scum comes up and you're gonna to need to skim the scum. And during the course of skimming the scum, you're gonna remove some liquid with that. So you wanna go as high as you can without having it overflow when you heat it up, which, is, which for me is gonna be basically right below this nut right here. Once again, the water will expand and the bigger the pot is, the more they expand, you know, the more dramatic the expansion will be. So this is a very, very big pot. So I know after it comes up to a boil, it's, it's gonna come up about a half inch to three quarters of, of an inch. But once it comes up to a boil, I start to skim it, so I start taking water out. So I'm actually gonna put just a hair more water in here. I'm gonna go like right to the middle of the rivet. And very carefully, slide it over. So first up to a boil on my highest flame. There's no point in wasting time there. You wanna get it up to a boil and start skimming it. Okay, and then let it start cooking and let it start going. The vegetables are gonna go in quite a bit later. All right, so the first thing we're doing is we're gonna light this up. Boom. So now we're in a holding pattern. You know, We're gonna talk about the vegetables that we're gonna use. We're gonna talk about the aromatics. Vegetables, vegetables, aromatics. Celery, big component in broto. Onions, big component in broto or any broth or any stock, okay? But do you really need any of this stuff to make a broth, to make a stock? Well, if you want vegetable flavor, yeah. If you don't, then no, okay? So, but classically, we want vegetable flavor, okay? And a classic Brodo needs it. And onions, carrots, and celery, absolutely 100% important. Some garlic heads split in half, some fresh bay leaves. I like to put black peppercorns inside as well. And I'm not gonna tell you the rest of the stuff right now. Okay, because I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have fun with it. That's, that, that's where the creativity comes into play with a, with a Brodo, is that, you know, you want to make it your own. And whatever you put in there is really going to translate, depending on how much you put, and especially if you're reducing it. Because then if you put, like, let's say you put a lot of peppercorns in, and then you turn that into sugo by reducing it all the way down by taking away, let's say, 80 to 90 percent of the, of, the, of the actual water and concentrating the gelatin and all the flavors, then the peppercorn flavor would be so strong that it would be too strong. So you also have to consider that. If you're planning on making a sauce out of this broth, okay, how much you put of everything, you have to keep it into account, the reduction. But I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going to do two extractions. The process is twofold. We start out and we make the brodo, the first extraction, which is perfect, golden, and clear, and gorgeous, okay? We pull that out, we chill it, we label it, and we freeze it. And then the second extraction happens, okay? 
from the same bones and the same vegetables and the same spices and the same everything. We're not going to add anything else. We are going to fill it back up with water equal to what we took out in Brodo, bring it back to a boil, and then reduce that all the way down to sugo. But first, we're going to cook it inside the same pot with the same bones, the same aromatics, the same everything for another six, seven hours, then strain it and then reduce it. And that reduction by 90% we call sugo. And it's heavy, heavy, heavy gelatin. It's going to get dark, dark brown in color. And it's an incredible meat glaze to use for any roasted meats, any sauteed meats. Roasted chicken, you want to make that sauce really ballsy and really full of jelly and glassy and sticky, which is what gelatin does for you, okay? You throw like just a little cube of it in there. And I'll show you some ways that you can also save it in the freezer so it's ready to use. You can put it in ice cube trays. So you can pull them out like as one cube and just throw it right into a sauce and agitate it and make a quick pan sauce with it. Okay, sugo has so many uses. It's just, think of it as heavily concentrated broth, which is really what it is. So we're gonna clean up these vegetables and prepare them to be thrown in at a later time. We'll talk about that, okay? I leave the skin on the onions. I don't take the skin off. Okay, I just wash them. I wash everything very well and I use absolutely everything. Everything, there's nothing to throw away here. Okay, everything, I just wash it. I wash everything, clean it well. I'm gonna wash these carrots really well and I'm using everything, including the tops. There's no reason to take anything off this. You just wanna get the dirt off of it. One, two, three, testing. And the onions, I'm just gonna cut them in half. That's it. Boom, done. Onion skins are perfect for a brodo. They give great flavor and great color also. They give nice gold, helps that gold amber color. Okay? Don't let anyone tell you there's anything wrong with onion skins. Save them for your brodos. You don't want to only use onion skin, and you know, you want to use reasonable amount, but onion skins are perfect in the broth. So here we have that, boom. Our garlic, we're just gonna cut it straight in half, like that, throw it in, like that. Our carrots are gonna go really big. This is gonna cook for a long time. The carrots can be nice and huge, no problem. We're just going to make sure that it's clean. There it is. Aromatics ready to go. The most fun right now is watching this beautiful scientific experiment happening right in front of you, which is all the blood and the impurities coagulating and rising to the top. We call it the scum rising to the top. And you say, well, scum's not supposed to rise to the top. Scum's supposed to go down to the bottom. But that's the great thing about it is that it does rise to the top so that we can easily skim it off. Okay, and you can see it's already happening. You see, look, I can already take some. You see, that scum. That scum, you see? And we're going to keep a container right here. And we're going to try and take as little water as possible while we do this, which is the reason why you can use a skimmer. But it's very important that the skimmer, the holes be very close together so it catches the scum and that the holes be the right size. There are some skimmers that are too, the holes are too big and it just falls right through. So you gotta find the right skimmer. So you can see all this stuff that's coming, that's all scum, you see? Scum, 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 scum. And we want to remove as it comes up. And as it gets hotter and hotter, fat, starts to render, because this is also going to be fat, and you're going to see we're going to also remove some of the fat, but we want to keep some of the fat also, because the fat is healthy in this case, because it's an organic turkey and it's grass-fed beef. Organic turkey, grass-fed beef, the fat is not something to fear on these animals, okay? It's healthy fat. 
Grass-fed animals are high omega fat. Okay, but as you're going to see now, as it gets hotter and hotter and as it comes to a boil, the turkey's going to come up and float, first of all. Okay, you're going you're gonna to know for sure you're up to a boil when that turkey floats. Okay, and more and more scum is going to keep coming. And it's never going to stop, and you're never going to stop skimming it. You're just going to keep your eye on it and keep paying attention to it until it comes up to a boil. And then we're going to bring it down to a simmer, a super slow simmer, guys. You can diffuse the heat underneath, okay? You can pull the pot off the burner. We'll talk about it later more in depth. Right now, we want high heat. We want to get it up to a boil. We want to start skimming. And we don't want to remove any water. As little as possible. Jeez. A little particles. It's all getting pulled out very gently, very softly. Much care. Where are my duties? He likes that. Uh oh, here we go. Game on. The best translation of sugo is gravy. Every day of the week. Okay? Deep, rich, intense, gelatinous, you know, viscosity to it, glazy. It's gravy. It should be, you know, that's the translation. So, broto broth, sugo, gravy. Okay? I like to think of sugo as the, you know, the, the bottom line of the meat. Like, like what's really what makes the meat delicious, like what makes meat tasty. It's an extraction. Sugo is that extreme extraction of the meat itself. Okay, you make the broth first. You do the second extraction. You reduce it all the, all the way down to a glaze, practically, to a really, really rich... Sugo. If you use only chicken, it would be a pure chicken gravy. If you used only venison, it would be a pure venison gravy. If you used only pork, it would be a, pork, a pure pork gravy or a pure veal gravy or a pure beef gravy. In this case, whoa, and there goes the turkey. The turkey just came up. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Turkey. How you doing? Or just turkey. You want to make a crazy turkey gravy, too. Same way, start off with the broto, reduce it down. Let's skim this mother. <sighs> look at all this scum, look, you see? Look at that. You see that? Damn. The turkey came up to say hello, the turkey always rises up. And don't worry if part of the turkey's in and part of the turkey's out, it doesn't matter. It still gets all the flavor inside the broth. Never stir. Never agitate, never disturb the bones, okay? If you do that, you will dislodge impurities which will cloud the broth. And you do not want it cloudy. You want a beautiful, clear broth. Why? Because it's beautiful. Because it's a wonder to eat. Because you can do it. You can figure it out if you follow what I'm saying. Do not disturb anything. And now we wait until more comes and we skim until we get to the boil, and then as soon as it boils, down to the lowest possible simmer. You want to see just bubbles coming up. That's a perfect simmer on a broto, like literally bubbles just coming up. Not too much rolling, just a little bit of rolling, but mostly just bubbles coming up. I'm going to show you now, which it basically is at. See that nice rolling boil, OK? 212 degrees, that's what we have here. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it down as low as it goes, and I'm going to check to see what kind of simmer that is, okay? Because I just want, like I said, I want a little bit of movement in the water because I don't want a lot of evaporation, and that's the key here, and that's why you need to diffuse the heat, because if the heat is rolling too hard, you're going to evaporate too much liquid before the broth is ready, and you're not going to have as much product at the end as you're going to want. It's not a problem, actually, because you'll just have a heavily reduced broth. You'll have a very rich, intense broth, almost like a sugo, if it does go too hard and it keeps reducing. Okay, so it's not like it's, you know, bad. It's just that 
you know, it's going to be too intense. And you want to have it a little bit less intense where you can reduce it and make it intense if you want or leave it nice and light. Just have a nice light broth, okay? So, diffuse the heat. Get it down to a tiny bubbles, you know, coming up. If you have to, just move it off the stove. Just move it away from the burner and just have the burner hit the side of the pot. And that can create a perfect light simmer. You just need the whole pot to be basically lightly moving. Okay. So now down to a simmer and you can see the action here. Okay. It's just bubbling lightly. It's, it's, there's not much going on in here. There's not a lot of, a lot of evaporation happening because it's not a rolling boil. It's the lowest setting I have here. Your stove may be too powerful for the pot you're using and you may have to diffuse it like we said. Okay, so once you get it here, we got these big, huge beef bones in there, these beef shanks in there. So I want to give those at least 12 hours, okay? At least, so it's already been going for about an hour or so. I'm gonna let it go nine hours. Then I'm gonna add in some of the vegetables, okay? And then when I come up on 10 hours, I'm gonna add in some of the aromatics and all my magic potion shit, you know? And I'll probably pull it at 10, 11 hours, pull it off the stove. And then we're gonna strain it out, and then we're gonna make the second extraction. So, pause here, nice eight to nine hour pause, and then we get back to work.